Welcome to fucking Israel! Cook a food for just the same day. If the food is finished, they close the restaurant. If it stay more full, he was gave it for poor people. Every time we look back, no better way to warm up. You gotta whip that cheese on. Huh? Good morning for my first full day in Israel. I guess you could kind of count yesterday as a full day, but at the end of the video, I was just so tired at that point from being awake for a day and a half that, yeah, I feel refreshed. Let's just say that. Yehuda Market is one of the most famous markets here in Jerusalem and they, they say it's more special because it's so authentic still. It has a mix of the old with a mix of the new. You get to see the bustling life, you get to see everyday shopping, street food, all right here in the heart of Jerusalem. One of the best ways to learn about a culture while arriving in a new location is to go to the local markets. Oh, 10, 12. Is yeah. that 12? Yeah. Woo! Lucky day today. <laughs> <laughs> One. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Well, what did you got? I don't think you? this gets much more fresh. This is called Kade. Now this is basically just bread and cheese. Let's give this a go. No better way to warm up. You gotta whip that cheese around. I think they use butter to make it. And I'm like a fat kid at heart. And butter ties it all together. It's crispy, it's warm. It's cheesy, it's delicious. Chocomat for Burex is where we got the Burex for. And they have this nice little seating place in the back. This looks so thick. Got pesto, some red spicy sauce, egg, Cheese, mushrooms, all filled. This is a heavier breakfast for sure. So this is like a tea selection. Jen loves teas, so I'm gonna grab a bag of tea. Um, can I do the apple cider? 24 shekels for 100 grams of tea. So now I can bring some tea back to Jen. I got the ginger honey. It is delicious. It's finally starting to warm up. Sun's coming out behind the clouds. <laughs> As you can see, a lot of the buildings are the same color. Almost all of them are the same color. And they all are built with this Jerusalem rock. And it's actually illegal to build your house with anything but this rock. This is the first one to eat it now. So do I get cookies, butter, hazelnut spread? Lata, classic, 
cookie butter, premium chocolate, pecan. All the sesame goes down into here, gets curated and pressured into all this pipe, drops into the tank, and actually comes out the tank solid. Oh my god. That pecan with alcohol on it, so good. So one of the more popular things you'll see around Jerusalem is these older shops. There's like a lot of antiques, antique jewelry, antique uh, religious items for prayer, you know, carpets, and different pieces. Uh, you can find jewelry and necklace pieces as well. So um, how much for the small red? Yeah. Oh, up, right there. Oh. In it's called, it says Shaddai. This okay. is uh, something. Uh, yeah, it's like a mezuzah. Can she do 150? Yes, ma'am. 150. Sagarno. Okay. Okay. So this store is over 35 years old. They have different carpets from Paris, different religious items, old antiques and stuff. And uh, so I try and pick up something at each place I go. And uh, thank you. Tada. Tada. I spent 150 on a Shaddai, which is like a piece of jewelry or it's a piece of the Jewish religion that brings protection to you. It works! The Jaffa Gate is the westernmost gate to the walls of Jerusalem. As you walk through the Jaffa Gate, if you look up directly above you, etched in the wall of the gate, it says in Allah in Arabic. So in order to go in and see the Tower of David, you actually have to go even inside the wall through the Jaffa Gate into the Old City and inside another gated community to see the Tower of David. And uh, it's 40 shekels yeah. to get in. And if you come on the right night, it's 65 shekels to see the night show. The museum presents Jerusalem's story. It's the details and major events in the history, beginning with the second millennial BCE until the city became the capital state of Israel. The very location of the Tower of David serves as a link to the east and west in Jerusalem. used by Turkish soldiers. At a museum like this for the Tower of David, you kind of have to have an audio tour or you have to pay for a guide because there's just so much significance and details and all the architecture and history that as a tourist, you would never be able to do enough research to learn it all. As the years go on and they start to discover more things and they start to dig up things and rebuild things to keep the history and keep the old architecture between the old and the modern city. In the Museum of David, you can see the entire process of them discovering more attributes and different things from the archeological history of Jerusalem. It basically shows what civilization in Jerusalem used to be like way, way back in the day. people on this train now. I guess it gets a little busy. Back at the market we started at early in the morning and look at how much busier it is. Oh, there's oranges. That's all for you? You can taste the alcohol. No? Maybe it's just me. 
Good for Israel. What did you do, Ben? Yeah. You have a YouTube? Yeah. Show. You got your phone? All your. How do you All your views go for subscribe. All the power. All. Go. You say kiss you. He means subscribe, like, comment, and turn on notifications. No. And now you gotta do one thing. Don't play them. Now. The people are so friendly. The locals are so friendly. The little kids. Oh, such a such a fun experience when everybody's got such a smile on their face. Itamar had told me, you know, the people are stressed here, but I've seen nothing but smiles, happiness, and laughter ever since I got here. We're in the city center of Jerusalem at Rachma. Rachma. It's one of the oldest restaurants here oldest. in the city center of Jerusalem. Sokmoy was a guy that he managed this restaurant a lot of years before. So it's working like this. They just cook a food for just the same day. If the food is finished, they close the restaurant. If it stay more food, he was gave it for poor people. So it's literally like a cafeteria line. You literally grab a lunch tray, ask for what you want, he serves it up, and you're good to go. Let's see what this beet soup is. Whoa, here you go. Whoa. That's beet soup with like a potato pastry with beef in the middle. That is so good. It's like a spring roll, fried, folded, with beans in the middle. It's very filling, very delicious. Great pair with soup. This goes great with soup. So they call this kube. These are both two different versions of kube. These are one with celery, a little sour, one with beet, a little sweet. And these are two authentic Israeli soups. And now we also got a plate to share. Some rice, some white rice, some beans, some yellow rice, some beans, some eggplant, and some carrots. So there's a lot of food to fill us up. This is the sour with celery. I believe spinach and beef. It definitely has a sour taste to it. Mm. Wow. The beef's a lot stronger in this. And you taste a lot more of that sour taste. At first it's such an overwhelming taste of sour. And then about two seconds after you take your bite and swallow, it dies out, goes away, and it goes right into that full beef flavor. Kube Selik, oh my god. This is my favorite dish I've had so far. Cool. This is so good. This is delicious. It's sweet. It's not super turkey. The beef flavor is full. The texture's just right because the beets have a nice crunch to it, and the beef has a soft texture. Oh. The lady that was behind the counter that serves the food, I'm assuming she probably cooks the food too. She told Ita, she said, you know, go eat before you order more food. Go eat, go eat. Because they only make a certain amount of food. And then they give the rest of the homeless. So they don't want you ordering a whole lot of food and then throwing a lot of it away. That was absolutely incredible and such a nice experience to try some local Israeli foods and dishes that I had no idea even existed. You know, I generally do a lot of research before each trip, where to go, what to eat, how to get around, everything I need to know. Write it all on a piece of paper, put it in a notebook, and I keep it with me on the whole trip in case I ever need it. Even with all my research, those dishes were not on my list. So having a local or asking locals while you're traveling is always beneficial to learn the best and find the best locations. I don't know how we found this, hang on. The sunset is incredible. You're overlooking this insanely beautiful valley with a city on the first mountain, city on the second one, and a city on the third one, all the way across the valley. The hospital's right up to our left. It's not fully finished, I don't think. I think they're still building a certain part of it, 
but it is a very, very large hospital. And we are on the roof of the dormitory stairs. So all the dormitories are built into the mountainside downwards. So that's Jerusalem, that far one and that This one? is Mavaseris, bro. Uh -huh. So I this live. is your city, yeah, Mavaseris. Yeah, with the big town. Yeah, yeah. and this one, I think the same. Mavaseris is all on the, the left mountain there. It's the fourth neighborhood.